guys, Ginger Cook here with John Little at the controls. And we're here for Acrylic Monday to review a live presentation of acrylic painting on how to paint some Fiesta daffodils. And the reason why I use the word Fiesta is that we want the painting to have the feeling of energy, even though it's called a still life. So how we're <laughs> going to do that is by the way we place color. It's sort of interesting thing. How do you get energy in a very monochromatic that means monochromatic for, uh, for those of you whose English is a second language means just everything is all one color and if you'll notice it in our uh, reference photo that is that's yellow daffodils a yellow pot and a yellow background and so while it's the daffodils in the pot are kind of pretty it could be a little boring so how are we going to take that painting and give it some oomph okay we're going to talk about that so the one of the things I want to uh, thank you, everybody who, who uh, you know, was with us when we were out uh, traveling, and you stayed with our uh, uh, our our shows on Monday, where John and I were able to type and answer questions directly. And I have to say, I really miss that. I'm not saying that we won't do that some Mondays, because I really like interacting with you guys directly. Though, if you have a question for me, you can. Uh, certainly uh, put in big capital letters and John will relay that to me because I have no way of reading your comments till after the show. We ask that everybody sort of stick to the subject of painting tonight, though a lot of interesting things are happening everywhere. This is probably not the chat forum to do them in. So, um, you know, but you, you know, if you've got a Facebook page and, you know, people probably could find out all kinds of interesting things about you on your own Facebook page. We have a Facebook page. Uh, painting club if you haven't become a member so a lot of our moderators moderate there too hi mods that are here we'll talk to you in a second and as a ginger cook acrylic painting club on facebook and that is the place where you can show us your artwork we're always interested in seeing that but again we kind of keep the subjects to art, art art related things themes so tonight we're doing it we're going on a 12 by 12 canvas i'm going to hold this up so you can see it um, it's, you can kind of get, can you go face? That's how big it is. And sometimes people understand how big is 12 by 12. Um, and, and it's been painted with, uh, some of the Daniel Smith gold gesso. Okay. But if you didn't have that, a lot of you bought that and you're thinking, I will never use this gold gesso up in my entire life. So we try to use it occasionally, but you certainly could just paint a canvas yellow. Okay. And remember, if you want something bright yellow, it has to yellow paints very well over white it doesn't paint well over dark brown so if you're doing something with dark brown and this is to who you, we have a friend who sent me in a pack recently for, for personal art coaching and she was trying to do some yellow um and, and kind of a yellow and dark pa uh, painting of, of of kind of like champagne glasses and she was trying to paint the yellow over the dark brown. It just doesn't work. So in case, and I, th I think I drive this point home so often, but in case you forgot, remember yellow only paints over white. Write that down somewhere. That's tip number one. Okay. So here we are. We're using our Salvador paint kit because we'll be giving away, um, we'll uh, be giving a, we'll give you a ch chance to, to win one of these nifty uh, Salvador paint kits. We haven't done that in a few weeks because we've been gone. And um, so we'll tell you what the, um, you know, how to enter toward the end of the show and how you can enter to uh, possibly win one of these. Also, this, uh, we got a fabulous um, uh, drawing we'll, we'll do tonight for those of you who were part of our appreciation, our appreciation of our channel and uh, scholarship fund and so forth and uh, we'll tell you a little bit about that because those paintings will be um, drawn for tonight and so that's exciting and we'll tell you a little bit about that in the meantime let's just get down to the business of um, this painting it's dry so what I want to do is I want to take a sponge and what I did was I went into the Salvador paint kit and if you're saying well where do I buy that I don't see that at the, on the online art stores no they sell it on Amazon you can find it on a link to our store the reason we like Salvador, it's a very good high quality paint. Uh, and, and But it's because the tubes are little, the initial cost of setup is very small. So you have the opportunity to, um, to be able to have a lot of colors for very little money. And when they put it on sale, they practically give it away. It's really good stuff. So I've got this sponge, it's a regular sea sponge. Uh, those you do have to kind of get at an art store. Um, and you know, they're natural sea sponges. And what we're going to do is we're going to add, I'm just going to take a palette knife 
and add some color to this. I don't want to just squish all my stuff in. So I'm going to just take some of these yellows that I've got on here like that. And I'm just going to kind of load up the sea sponge like this. Um, these were just kind of what was in the kit. All right, let's see if that works. All right, should we try that? See what I get. Yeah, that works. See, it kind of, you see how I've sort of mixed the colors like that? See, and I'm kind of swirling around. Already you're seeing sort of a pattern. Now I want something a little darker in the corner, so I'm going to add a little burnt sienna and a little bit of, say, this pretty bright orange color and maybe a little yellow. Just kind of dab it on the sponge here. I have a little bit more control that way. And uh, any old palette knife would have done for that. Probably use a spoon, but all right. So here we go. I want to just keep going, and I'm going to just sort of stomp this on here in the corners, just like that. Yeah, that's what I want. And you see how it sort of glows. Ooh, I'm getting a lot of mileage out of this, aren't I? I want it kind of darken here, and then I want to come over here, do a little bit of that right up in here. Ooh, I'm liking this, John. I thought you would. It's the way that gold was put down, my dear. Yeah, great job. John always does the underpaintings for me. It's really nice. He gets everything set up. Uh, we got back from our trip, and... Um, of course, nothing worked, and the batteries were all dead. It's always <laughs> such a challenge doing a YouTube show. If you guys knew the, what it takes to put one of these on, you'd be shocked. So I want a little yellow oxide now. I want to put a little bit of that color in with some of my yellows um, the, you know, for some of the rest of this. And let's look that. I don't think we've used that color. That's kind of pretty. Oh, that's sort of this kind of an orange, but not really. So let's see what this does up in here like this. Oh, yeah, that has that almost kind of a like green feel to it with the yellow oxide. That's pretty. Ooh, I'm liking that. See? And this is a damp sponge, not wet. Okay, so we're just going to come in here like that. No dripping. No, yeah. So then, I'm kind of liking that a lot, actually. And then toward the bottom, I want something a little bit lighter. Toward the bottom, I want, think I want something kind of... We want to indicate a table just with color, okay? So I'm going to come down in here like this and... Stomp, 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 going this way. Did your mother ever tell you don't stomp your feet? Oh, absolutely. So who we got out there for mods today, John? Well, I see um, the Liz's are in. Liz Ooh. 1 and Liz 2. Judy, Steffi, Lynn from our Quebec office. I haven't seen Lou Ann yet, so I'm not sure if she's with us or not today. Yeah, okay. Well, yep, Lou Ann's with us. I had to scroll back up a little bit. Hi, Lou Ann. Hi, Judy. I think about everybody's here except our Swedish office is probably sleeping. Well, it's awfully late there in Sweden. Um, and we know that, for instance, like, for instance, our good friend um, uh, Lorraine in, in um, the Mediterranean. <laughs> I forget where she lives, but somewhere. Well, I mean, she's with us. She, she, are you with us? Good. Yeah, Lorraine's I know right it's, there. So, it's so, so late for you, and we know it's late for... Um, our our friends and you know Israeli friends and uh, you know some of you that are maybe watching from a time zone that puts you at four in the morning. Gosh, you're sweet. Thanks for staying up. But, you know, and you know, look, I know it's fun to chat. Come back and watch the show again. I just did a, some personal art coaching for someone that had a pretty good question on a background I was doing on another painting, and I had actually answered that question in the video. But if you're busy chatting, which is fun, and we're glad and hanging in, how out with hanging out with us, okay? Come back and watch these videos again. The more you play them, the better it is for us anyway. Better for you. Play it again. Make sure you really understand what we've done. All right. So I feel pretty good about this. Um, that's what I've got. Now these sponges can be used again if you quick like a buddy, put them in water and rinse them out. Okay. Otherwise, acrylic dries like cement, and so much for the sponge. And natural sponges are kind of pricey. Considering what you get, I mean, I don't remember how much they were, but they, they you know, someone always says, what should, "What should I spend my coupon on?" Natural sponges and rulers. So those are the kinds of things I never see go on sale. You know, art stores will put a lot of fun things on sale. A lot of times you'll see brushes on sale because the markup on brushes is so extraordinary. Um, I remember Jerry's used to do ninety percent off on some of their brushes. You know, and if you know if they can give ninety percent off, there's Could, markup. Well, there must be some kind. I mean, 90 percent, which made me always just kind of want to wait for the sales, which I don't know if that was their intention. All right. I need to dry this before I, you know, transfer on the um, the, the picture. OK, so, John, um, I guess what I could do right now when this is sort of sitting <laughs> I here. Say, 
Um, I could I could put a hair dryer in a second, but I want to show you real quick the paintings that we're going to be um, drawing for tonight. And perhaps John, you could get ready. Maybe we could draw for one now. Yeah, I'm ready. I got okay. my list. So got, the bowl is down down underneath your little table there. Okay, so here's the we ha we did it a little different this time. If you had donated at least a hundred dollars over this quarter period, every two months we started this last year um you you have one entry for every hundred dollars that even if you did ten dollars a month or something for every hundred dollars or ten dollars a month over a quarter well, wouldn't do it, would it but i mean in a quarter <laughs> <laughs> well you and math again you're not in the be, well, uh, accounting right. department <laughs> anyway in any event that gives you one entry so some people had two some people had three yeah but mostly it was uh, this and um so you've got this. This was on our Wave and Water Masterclass painting. I really love this painting. I think it's really neat. It's on a round canvas. I think this was really neat. We have that one. And then this was a for, for also from a Wave and Water Masterclass. Before I do a, do a very large painting, I like to sometimes work out the details. So this was the first one I did. Then later I did a larger one with a gondola. But so this is a painting of Venice. And then some of you may like the palette knife technique that goes into these rocks in the water. This was almost 100% palette knife on this. And again, three of our Wave and Water Masterclass uh, paintings, original paintings, thought you might like those. And um, and then we have, uh, so, because I felt like I couldn't give you half of a picture, we, <laughs> <laughs> we have, tacky this, of this is what's called a diptych. And you see, they they stand alone, but when you put them together, they become one painting. So the first drawing we do, that person will have the opportunity to pick which of the five paint, you know, the, either the the, the other the four paintings, the four paintings, either they want the the diptych or one of the others. All right. So um, I'm going to do a drawing for that right now. You say the fishbowl is somewhere underneath your table on the side. On the side. That's not in the side. What side is that? The other side. That'd be your right side. The right side. That would be this. Uh, under the, no, okay. The little, oh, behind <laughs> where me. you always put it. <laughs> this is back behind me. Underneath. I thought I put it back where you would normally put it. <laughs> All right, Are you, you work with me. <laughs> Underneath the table on your right side means kind of by your right foot. Is that what you would think? No. You know, apparently, John doesn't think that. All right, so here's our fish bowl. Well, really a that's an official fish bowl. That's an official fish bowl. And, I had it for years. And well, Cinnamon made this for me when I was in the hospital about ten years ago, and uh, I had to go to the hospital and spend the night. And she made that, and the kids made it. And they put it, they filled it full of flowers and paint brushes and stuff. It was gorgeous. I just never could uh, part with that. So anyway, I'm going to reach in, see who the first name is, right? You're not going to see a name. You can see a number. You have no idea what's what. Oh, I don't have a I have. You don't a have a clue. You can even look at the numbers and, and not know what you're doing. All right. It says admit one. but what we, We're going to admit who won. I just need the last three, last three digits. Two, three, one. Who is that, John? Two, thirty, one is Andrew. Andrew. All right. Andrew, if you're in the house, which I believe you are, who got my pencil? So congratulations, Andrew. Let's do one more because I'm here. And I'm trying to get this to dry. All right, this is exciting, isn't it? Let's do one more. Okay, that's number one. Okay. Okay. Now, if Andrew's gifts again. So we'll, we'll redraw if it's yep. only one. So 228. 228? Two, two, uh-huh. That's Andrew's. Okay, so Andrew, you got the one. Just, just put it in the side. Just, just put it with the group. Don't don't throw it out. No, no. Right. Don't. Right. don't. Andrew, Keep these things. Um, and by the way, Andrew, this is a good night to buy you know buy a lottery ticket. I would say <laughs> if I were you, you know. All right, two two five. Two two five. That is. I don't have a two two five. Are you sure you're reading it right? It says two two five. Oh, there it is. Huh. Uh, Wanda Spratt. Oh, congratulations, Wanda! Our I student of the Wanda, month. Odd Wanda is our student of the month. Uh, Wanda started painting with us a few years ago, and I'm telling you what. The, well, she started with us in 2016. Yeah, and, and I'm, she's just doing masterpieces now. It's fantastic. Really good. Congratulations, Wanda. So you will have your choice of one of those. And should we do the last one? Might as well, since we're here. We're here, right? Then Might we'll just, as well. We'll just kind of be done with this and see where we are, right? We're going to be right. done with it. Be done with you. Two, three, eight. Two, three, eight. I have that. Oh, good. That is uh, Tint. 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 Okay. Two, three, eight. All right. Congratulations, Number you guys. Three. 
Right. Okay, as soon as Andrews lets us know what he wants, then we'll have number two go if they're out there. Yeah, I'm sure, Jan, uh, yeah, sure, uh, she uh, sure they are. Sure Wanda's there. I'm sure she is. All right, so if congratulations, not, Andrew. Please let us know. And uh, uh, again, we again thank everybody for um, I gotta go through this. their help and uh, support. All right, so this looks pretty good, except for that drop of water. Andrew, if you did make a, a choice, say it again, because I was doing all the paperwork. All right, it's still a little tacky, so just give me a second here, and we'll dry it, right? But mostly it's dry. That's how fast this is. If you have a damp sponge, and you're not putting this on real thick, it's not going to take long to dry, all right? Ready? No. 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 Wait, wait. Oh, gosh. Wait. Uh, incidentally, John has his own channel called The Tech Bear, and it's the, it's the complicated stuff of the technology that takes to watch anything on anywhere on YouTube or in our academy. It's like, um, you know, how to, you know, how to, well, some of the things that John... Basically, it's stuff around how to make everything work on your computer. Why why, why can't I download a lesson? Why doesn't this work? All these fun little questions we get. John makes videos. It's the Tech Bear channel. And maybe okay, Andrew's taking the uh, the double. Okay. Wait, i got to make a moment of that. Who's right. on my paper? John's making All right, so well, Wanda. I don't, is Wanda out there? Well, look, she can tell you in a minute. I'm telling okay. you about the Tech Bear. So the oh, Tech Bear... <laughs> So John perhaps has a tech bear a tip that he can give you why I'm drawing this because we get questions in every day. Part of it is uh, I'm going to give you one. Use the contact us if you. I was going to do that one. All right. Well, you get to do something else. Then I'm drawing this. Mute me. <laughs> you're you muted. You're muted. All right. Hey, uh, when you guys have technical issues or questions, use the contact us if you can get to our website acrylicpaintingwithgingercook.com. But if you're having problems with that, go to gingerclipalive.com and use the contact form on that. That will always be available as kind of a, a safe haven. Because you can get blocked out on our website if you enter your password wrong too many times. And that's just kind of the nature of the beast right now. As you can imagine, we are constantly being under attack, uh, more so than normal. So again, use the contact us. Ginger gets things in from you guys that are sending them packs. And honestly, I have to go back out to you guys and say, I need more information. You know, what kind of computer are you using? Or a tablet or phone? What browser are you using? Give me screenshots if you can. You know, anything will help speed the process. Uh, I got an able staff of uh, people that will help get this resolved in a quick and efficient manner. Ooh, that sounded professional. Cool. Dude. <laughs> cool, dude. Cool, dude. All right. Okay, so, so he got the double. So we're just going to start off with this. Um, we're going to hope that the, the Sorrel paper works today. We should. Should. So we're going to put the, the white side down. And this is our just sort of a black and white. We just want to, want to center this on here on this 12 by 12. Just, you know, once we could freehand it in, but then where would the fun be in that? I mean, I yeah, asked you. freehand it in. It's just, I mean, this is pretty simple. If you didn't have this, honestly, you you, you could do this yourself, but I'm just. Oh, it, you notice I made it black and white so you guys don't run out of yellow ink. And that yeah. will be available on our website in black and white. And I also did an outline one. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, if you're using that, um, that system from, from Hewlett Packer, where they where they send you the ink, and they don't care whether it's colored. Everybody else charges more for colored ink. They weren't really counting on artists using their service, and so they they start up. I think at under like four bucks a month or something, and then whenever they know when you've run out of ink, and they they send it to you before you start. They magically, to get low. they have a crystal ball. They have a crystal ball, and the only um so that was sort of. I, we did that. Well, we still do. We have still have one. Do we still use that, John? No, we, we we did that for a long time, but then we, we did found, it for about four years. Yeah, four years, and then we we just weren't using. We're that using anymore. different printers now. We're using we higher end stuff. A, you know, different printer. So I want to just see if this is working. Is it? Only if you put it down the right way. Is it not down the right way? I'm not thinking it is. No. You had a fifty-fifty sure? shot. Yeah, you're right. I did. I. How can I tell that from across the room? I don't know. Just so, so confusing. Well, it could happen to anybody, John. Obviously, it happened to me, <laughs> Anybody? Well, I saw something kind of interesting today. One of the things I was reading, uh, reading an article that was talking about how kind words actually are good for your health. 
And, oh, that's good. I mean, the whole thing was how kind words. They've actually scientifically proven that not just having someone say kind words to you, but just saying kind words in general, actually, I mean, I don't say it's uh, beast taking vitamins, but it certainly goes, you know, it goes along with all that stuff. You know, who knows what it does? So that being said, why don't we just take some moment, say some kind words to yourself about being an artist. You don't have to say them to somebody else like, you know, I love to paint. My stuff comes out really well. Find some kindness for yourself before you start. Just get a, get, get into the alignment of I can do it, like the little, the little, um, the, the little engine that the could. little engine that could. Because I promise you, this is so simple, and uh, your background may be even more spectacular than mine. And I thought mine was pretty spectacular. I got to tell you, I love how this came out. <laughs> there is something to be said about that, um, that gold Daniel Smith uh, gesso. See. Um, it's it's expensive, and I don't think you. Yeah, it's forty we've bucks had this, that whole thing. Yeah, it's like forty bucks, and I don't think is that. Well, yeah, look at that, forty three, and we got you know probably go up now, but um, it does it is it has its uses. How's that? It does. And it, there's this very um, I'm trying to think of her name. There's this very famous English artist, and she lives in Houston in England. Kind of divides her time between those places, and um, uh, she's the one that. Uh, kind of you know talked about that what back when i used to teach at jerry's artorama here in houston she'd come in and everybody kind of we all knew each other and um and she said that basically that before she does any of her horse paintings and she is the kentucky derby artist she's the gal that they pick to do the posters and all the artwork for the kentucky derby where it comes to horses so she's Which the horse lady. So, uh, yeah, but, and you think, well, I mean, you see, I'm kind of doing a still life, but I mean, she's using that as a, um, you know, as a background for her, for her equestrian art. That's what that's called, in case anybody wonders. And um, uh, it's, it's interesting. We've done a few of the Christmas pieces with it. Um, there's a few of the, of the things on YouTube uh, that we have done. Um, and uh, that we use that background color and it is pretty and I tell you what the sponge thing I just did I really like mm, a lot I think that sponge would you know, be really pretty I'm digressing here but use that gold background and then do a patina on it in turquoises and then maybe a little gold on top of that wouldn't that look cool just sort of something like old Greek looking ancient stuff yeah old timey old timey and uh, uh, we think that would be really nifty. Now, I'm not going to put in every flower that this person uh, crammed into this vase. Um, well, I don't know why not. Well, we're just not. We're going to oh. we're going to just we're going to do a little Reader's Digest editing. Do you remember that? With I used to love those Reader's Digest books that would come in the. Um, I'd get them every 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 month. They, the, my books would come, and, and I used to like their magazine too. Let's see, what am I missing here? Maybe some of these stems down in here like that. Let's see. Can we sort of see that? Well, we can see something. Hey, we'd like to thank uh, Clarice for the donation that came in through PayPal. She put herself on a subscription, so she's guaranteed an entry every quarter. Oh, wow. And wait till you see the paintings for this time. I'm going to show you those later for this quarter. Ooh. I've got them sitting right here. Wait till you see Where? those. I haven't seen them. Well, because I'm doing this. Oh, that's right. It's You're busy. Here. I, I just doing this. Hey, we'd also like to thank Catherine for her donation that came in through the PayPal system. She's off and running for another quarter. And also Sharon Strait. Thank you, oh, awesome. ladies. Thank you, guys. All right, so I think I can figure out where a few leaves go. What do you guys think? All in all, I just wanted to get the shape of this um, thing. Now, here's the trick. When you're when you're using transfer paper, sometimes if your canvas is a little bouncy, if it's not real stiff, it's much easier to do on a board. You can put like a little piece of cardboard and tuck it in there behind your stretch canvas, and that will give you a little firmer surface. And then I like to use a pen and go over the lines several times not just do one drawing out like that doesn't do it so that's your tip number two is um, um you know make sure that you have enough support on your canvas where the Terrell transfer paper gives it gives you a shot at working okay
and go over the and use a colored pen so you know where you've been. You're not confused. Yeah. Yeah, exactly so. Exactly so. And uh, I did white because I thought because we're doing yellow, and if I did if I had done a blue or red, it would have uh, messed up my flowers because the, there is well, you some transfer it. of the color into your paint. So there you go. Yeah. See that there it is. More so, or less. Now, all right. So that's kind of cool, right? So um, that's where you're gonna keep it. Now. And I've got some some nice, really some nice um, um nice lines. Not, not, I've got a pretty good image here. So I'm going to take a smaller brush. I bet we packed all the brushes. They're still in the suitcase, aren't they? All the little brushes, aren't they? All the little tiny. Oh. Oh, yeah, those brushes. Huh. Huh. Yeah. Well, funny you. Why are I have to use this do one? Do you have enough or do you I'm, uh, I can do anything. All right. So I'm going to Ooh, take some you of this sound like me. I can do, take some of this bright orange color. And Love the first thing I'm going to do is kind of put in the shape of my vase before I lose it. And this brush does not have any water on it. Oh, shocker. And it's, um, um, now you're using working. all Salvador paints except for the whites. Yeah, which all are Salvador golden. paints on this except for the white and the Daniel Smith gold. But again, you could use, um, I don't Certainly think I would use the Salvador's for an underpainting just because no. they're costly to cover that much. Yeah, they're very, they're good. If you do the math on them, they're, they're really no, they're not less money than anybody else, but you can, you, they can keep you going. Obviously, you know, um, oh, we did a ton. Oh, we did some of the neatest paintings. On, oh, you guys um, got to wait and see what we got. coming. It, it, we, we, I did some great Holy paintings moly. while we were gone and even, I uh, did a, a, you know, sold a, a commission for th three uh, pet portraits. Um, and I and I have to say that, you know, and this is something for some of you who are just talking about um, wanting uh, to um, keep, you know, kind of pay for your hobby, right? Pet portraits. It can be a really good thing because uh, people, people will spend a fortune on, on their, their pets. And, um, I'm going to throw one of my good friends under the bus. Should oh, I do that? who's going? My friend Joe. Should I do it? Joe? <laughs> Joe. Really? My, my friend Joe is taking care of her daughter-in-law who just had <laughs> surgery. And and her daughter-in-law and her son, who, you know, in their 40s, 50s, li live on, on kind of a ranch and they have chickens and goats and horses and stuff and he he uh, does uh, he's like a horse whisperer her son and um anyway um so uh, her her daughter-in-law had to have this surgery and i said how's it going and she said well the chicken's been a, a bit of a problem and i said what are you talking about and she said well it's a great story it's true too i mean I, 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 I'll, she said she'd send me pictures. I'll probably share them with you next week if you want to see, but she sends me pictures. But apparently she, the, 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 this gal's in the, the, the one that had surgery is in the guest bedroom and, um, with her chicken. Oh, uh, pardon me? With her chicken. And do what? The chicken even has a little ladder, little stairs that allows it to climb up and then up into the bed. This lady just had surgery, right? Getting, so getting her so you have a live a chicken and sleeps up by her neck, and um and 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 um she just didn't feel she could go anywhere without the chicken, and so if some of you feel like um maybe you 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 feel like perhaps that you've been challenged a little bit by house guests lately, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> invite them to sleep with a chicken. So, of course, you know me, I'm going to ask. I said, yeah, okay, I'm using a little bit of this dark soap green, a little bit of burnt umber, just a tiny bit on my brush. So I said, surely, um, um, I just want to get that in there because this is, you can always lighten it up here. Um, Well, I don't know. I'm just so dumbfounded by the chicken. And I said, well, you know, chickens, who? And as John's owned chickens before, apparently they never had special ladders to go to your bedroom, right? <laughs> just anyway, I, I don't I think it's hilarious. And so then 
Um, but I did ask. I said, well, uh, what about the chicken pooping on the floor? And she said, oh, well, it's covered with newspaper, which is probably a good thing if the chicken's going to poop on the floor. So, I, but anyway. I guess um, you could put a put a diaper on a chicken. I, I don't know. I don't I think just, you can do a put a diaper on a chicken. I just was I was just so dumbfounded. Now, this is sort of an interesting trick. I have this yellow on one side of the brush and there's this bright green on the other. And when I do this, I get sort of a combination of both with an angle brush. This is a uh, a half inch silver, a uh, ruby satin silver angle. And this okay. is what we would call a dirty brush. Yeah, that's what you'd call this. So um, see how I, you can kind of just bend it? Well, I think you're twisting it more than bending it. Yeah, maybe just twisting it and put it in there like that. And it's sort of, um, you can do that. I normally would do the yellow first and then do that. But I wanted to get a couple of these in here like that. Before they get away. Yeah, well... I don't know that they're going anywhere particular, but, you know, why take a chance, right? You, 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 you just can't. You can't. You can't take a chance because some of this does get, get darker. And uh, there's all these. Um, here, let's let's do this. Let's put a stem in right here. Is there one there? Are you adding one? I don't know. <laughs> but it's all green here. So um, and then it gets kind of a dark green. So we'll just. Yes, there really are this. chicken diapers. Oh, I should tell her. Well, maybe yeah, not. Says they, they, they make chicken diapers, and Janice said it, too. Well, anyway, so maybe you don't think that was unusual. I, I thought that was kind of a shocker myself. That, that, um, you know, when I had my chickens, I, I really didn't let them in the house. Call me crazy, I guess. Well, yeah, call me crazy, yeah. But uh, There, so I'm just going to do a little bit of this yellow outlining now. See how you can kind of lighten up something? This acrylics do dry darker, but you can always put a little light color over something and you've got this. So that kind of gave me a chance to let that dry, which is way cool, right? Is that what you were really doing? Yeah. You were buying time. Yeah, kind of, to let that dry. So now I've got this, um, uh, the, kind of the makings of this um, vase. Now I'm going to take a little of the burnt umber and a little of that bright orange. I want to come in here and put a shadow on the inside. Let's see. Let's got too much water on the brush. Let's really wipe it off. Don't want any dripping. A little bit of burnt umber and orange here. Come on the inside of this handle and twist it around and do that. My shadow. And I want a little shadow under the lip. And I think I want a little more red and orange rather than the brown. Let's see. Here's a little shadow of the lip here. Like that. Okay, and um, I know that it's going to be a little bit darker on this side, so I'm going to just add a little bit of a shadow like this on this side. Um, feels like the light's kind of coming this way, and uh, we're going to do that. And then uh, the vase actually had this weird thing on the front, and I'm not putting it, I'm just... To, it didn't make any sense to me. We're doing what we call an, an edit, okay? What's on the front of it? Well, if you, you look about at the, the reflection? picture, there's, no, there's a, like a little handle piece that sticks out here. Kind of, um, I don't know what it's for, but I, I'm just, uh, this is what you call an edit. So we're kind of I leaving that out. I believe you're seeing a reflection, my dear. Not, no, not here. I'm not seeing a reflection. You just are <laughs> You cannot argue with the master. This, oh, you think that's a reflection? That is a reflection. No, it is in your picture, but it's not in the photo. In the photo. It is in the photo the same. So, I didn't modify the photo, you goofball. What do you think I'm doing? Editing your photos for you? Well, I do that at times. But not this one. That's a reflection. You're right. You're right. I know I'm right. I'm huh. a photographer. He has two lights on the subject. So we had triple lights. Okay. Well, no, uh, two lights. Well, that'll go in later then. Well, you I'm don't not need to put like that, that in. I didn't think you'd be putting that in. Well, I don't know what I'm doing, but it isn't that. <laughs> so, uh, just, <laughs> this is why we say, look at the photo. I don't and know then ask you. somebody else to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> look at the photo. Get a second opinion. Yeah, get a second opinion. There's nothing wrong with that. So. Oh um, my goodness. Go ahead. Just, just say anything. I challenge you. Just go ahead. Let's just. Take a yeah, the photographer, he lit this on two, one on the side and one basically right at it. 
So the see, in, in my, I modified this a little bit, this picture, um, in the computer, and the computer kind of really distorted it. So, so are um, you looking at yours? I'm look. I was looking at mine. What? Yeah, I would see. Yeah, what you do with you? Hmm. Okay, so I got. We got. We're putting a few of these tulips in in white. Um, even though we'll go over them a little bit, we're going to go ahead and put those and in. And why are we doing them in white first? Because we told you at the beginning, right? Yellow uh, likes to paint over white. John, have you put up a form yet for the photo challenge painting? Yes, it is. So if we... you go to the page at the photo challenge, we have a photo challenge going on right now for our paying members, orange and above, to participate. And you have until the 13th or 15th of March to enter and get a certificate of once we get them all done. And we'll post them on the website. But on that, where you get your references, right there, we have it all together now. So go back to where you got the reference, and the form is right there. Oh, good. Because apparently yeah, people was, were somewhat Liz and I, we confused. worked on that for a day trying to figure out exactly how to make it simpler for you folks. And we did. We came up with it. Okay. Brilliant brains that we have. Get to wee hours of the morning. All right, so there we go. There's some. We'll just kind of kind of put those in, and then this is a pretty simple painting, you guys. We're gonna say that there's some petals up here that uh, kind of did this on the daffodils. When I grew up in um, Washington State, one of the things they had was the daffodil festival in the spring, Gallup Fair and the daffodil festival, and because that was, you know, they that was one of their main exports. I don't know, probably still is of, of daffodils and, and stuff. Let's see, let's see, you can go to that one. And you can be up here doing that. Okay, all right. So now I'm gonna try something else. Um, I'm gonna take another little sponge and I'm gonna just play with this vase a little bit now that I've got it kind of blocked in. Whoops, let me just drop the sponge. Ah, oh, but I have a thicker upper thing. Uh, you do indeed. It's falling all over the floor. All right, so let's see. I need to find a Kleenex somewhere. Give me a just a couple seconds here, John. And I look for the Kleenex. And uh, oh. all right. So now I'm going to take a smaller sponge wet it and I'm going to do the same pattern again on the base okay that I did before but um, again I'm going to just use my palette knife and pick out the colors that I want just put a you know dab a few colors there like that now, uh, Terry would like to know, John, will you have a marathon this year? We might. <laughs> we don't have one well, scheduled there, in. Well, there, there, there's a commitment for you. Well, here's the thing. Uh, those of you who may not know this, but um, uh, we've got this nifty workshop planned that uh, sent my daughter Cinnamon, the archer, was doing. The uh, May Retreat. It's called a May Retreat, and it's really fantastic. I mean, all the paints provided. Uh, everybody goes home with their own little set of paints and brushes and everything, and it's all inclusive with the meals and the snacks and the bottled water and the one-on-one -on -one time with uh, Cinnamon and I and um, uh, and John, of course. You could say, you know, and we'll all have dinner together and do stuff. It's it's going to be a blast. We have a few spots left. Not um, many. They're going fast. They're going fast, and John said to mention. Uh, that would be Cinnamon's John said to mention that if anybody would like to do a partial payment on that to maybe break it up, um, you can go on their website, I think, and do it in two pages. Well, they have, uh, they have their support number, uh, support at theartsherpa.com email. And Donna is in the, um, should be in our chat today. Donna's uh, kind of, is one of Cinnamon's uh, mods and she's helping out with this and knows all. Sees all and knows all. She knows all. So, um, which is good, which is good because we know little, but 
um, but we're going to have it. We're going to, we're going to, I'm going to, I know I'm going to be teaching a palette knife painting and, to, and some palette knife techniques. And we're going to, we're going to do, so, we're going to have such a good time. We're so looking forward to that. It's just, we're going to have and, a ball. And, uh, the retreat is in the Poconos, up in Pennsylvania. Yeah, up in the Poconos. And it's this fancy hotel, uh, really nice. And apparently the food is divine. And uh, Cinnamon's done a couple others up there and has had great success with those. And uh, see, we kind of put our little vase back, and it kind of goes now, doesn't it? And uh, so now we yeah, need there's to... Donna, and Donna is in the house. Donna, so Donna, maybe you could just um, you know put a link if if you have. Oh, yeah, that. we've got links. The girls we've got links them. and stuff. We're doing we're doing okay, right? I think so. Like I said, we got limited spaces left. And uh, that and I really it's so um it's so fun. Uh we had originally talked John and I had originally talked about doing a birthday cruise in February, but we are no longer going to even consider that. Uh we're not doing that the this current year. Current world events we feel it's it, not it, the we're, time. We're not yeah. We're gonna tentatively slate it for the twenty twenty four. You know. But that will just be a meet and greet. That won't be a painting cruise anyway. This is no. a, this is actual art lessons that we're doing up there with cinnamon. Yeah, real live stuff. Real real live art lessons and really nifty things, right? So you see how we're um, how it all comes together. Yeah. Huh. Now this is CAD yellow medium from. This is the only paint that's a little bit different. I'm putting that in here like this, right up in this area. And I'm going to do some with a little white on it. Here's a, something you don't know. Oh. Well, maybe you know. Some of you may not know. Let me rephrase it. Some of you may not know. But I don't have any cad yellow light. But if I had any cad yellow light, okay, <laughs> you can't mix that. That's a color that cannot be mixed. You can't take white and cad yellow and get it. No, cad yellow light. So people always say, well, what colors? If I'm going to buy some colors, what would you suggest? And I always say, um, you know, ha your yellows and reds are marvelous colors. Pretty much mixed greens, but your yellows and reds are a good thing. And we'd like to know, Ginger, will you be at the meet and greet too? Uh, is the meet and greet in the beginning? No, at the very end. Oh. No, John and I have, it's a two-day drive for us up and back. And so we will be leaving the, the morning of Friday. The end the Friday morning to get back to Houston. So um, we had already previous plans before the date was selected. And um, so there's the. Well, there's we will, that. I think there'll be plenty of time of meet and greeting during the dinners and during the days and stuff. And, well, some people are coming to the meet and greet that aren't in the workshop. Ah. So no, we won't be there for that. But you'll no. that gives you more time with cinnamon. You see, kind of. You see how I'm kind of indicating a, um, a table. Um, by by doing that, making it a little bit darker. I'm just making it. There you go. All right. So there's our. Then the, all this has had kind of had time to um. More drying. To more drying, huh? So it's a little bit of a challenge when you're doing a monochromatic painting, or you know something with just a few colors. Uh, sometimes because then you really do have to focus on the lights and the darks and um, you know and sometimes like for instance if you're doing a, like a little bit of a sponge here and quickly if you're you know you've got to um, you know if you want to kind of repeat the pattern with a brush you can do it but it's a little more challenging here you go here's the top of this maybe a few more a few more donations come in through the PayPal system so let's give a big thanks to Andrew Phyllis and Sally. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. We appreciate that very much. Now, look how this yellow is laying on top of the white, you guys. Now, normally I would start with dark colors first and then do yellow. But the reason I'm not doing that is because I want to, um, because, because yellow only paints over white, I have to have kind of my brightest yellow first and then kind of tone it down is what I'm doing. I'm going to start with this over the white and then just I'm going to start at what we call knocking it back, which doesn't mean drinking. We're, <laughs> we're going to 
knock, we're going to push that color back a little bit or, or tone it down. Now, the question came up recently in a personal art coaching a question was one of them was, um, can you tell me, um, I keep getting the wrong color green. The person kept getting this bright phthalo green and wanted a um, more of an olive green. And remember that even if you're starting out with phthalo green or phthalo bright phthalo green and you need it to go more olive, you know, like olives, okay, that color. You, the red is opposite green on the color wheel. So if you dump red or br brown has red in it into greens, you will start to change their tones. So they won't be a blue green anymore. They'll start to go olive. Yellow oxide has a bit of red in it. So you could always add that. These are things to keep in little, mind. A little bit at a time. Or are you going to go too far? Yeah. Now, um, or you could just start off with ultramarine blue and yellow too. That would be another way to get. But if you ran out. Then you need it. And you just had the phthalo green. How could you tone it down a bit? You can get there from here. You can get there from here. Okay, so you kind of see what I'm doing there. Like that, I kind of did did that. Now, to make this more interesting, we're going to start putting in some orange tones to these uh, flowers. I'm going to start giving a little bit of depth. Um, because we already have a photograph, you see? Does that make sense? We already have a photograph. We so photograph, you know, just having a photograph, we really don't, we don't really need uh, more of the same. Does that make sense? So now we want something a little more arty. How's that? We want to be a little bit more arty, a little looser, something that would, uh, you know, would, would kind of, you know, really bring this out. And contrast, what do we mean by contrast? Contrast is the difference between, if this was a black and white picture, picture between the grays and the whites. And you always wanna have contrast in your painting. So that's what we're going for here. We wanna make sure that we have some good contrast in the in these flowers and a few layers to, um, to solidify the contrast. And you know, that's, that's what we're going for here. And um, if I need to add a little bit of something darker in here, I can. I'll put some more green later. Start pulling in some of these colors. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit more of this brighter orange now on the... How do you become more arty? Don't get so... How to become more arty? Don't... Don't get so focused on the photograph. You, you know? are better than the photograph. You know, don't get so focused. You already have a photograph. So what can you do that um, the photograph has not done for you? What, can you? what could you do? What can you tell us about these tulips and stuff that nobody's seen before? Yeah. And I mean, the photographer what, couldn't capture. Yeah, because he's stuck with what, whatever's there, right? So you see, now I'm kind of going over this a little bit now and adding to kind of deepening that shadow. And I want something dark at the bottom. So I've got one of these kind of orange reds that came right out of the Salvador kit. Thankfully, I get packs and Ginger figures it out for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, eventually you will learn it. You do it enough, you will learn it. Yeah, you, you will. And, and the thing of it is, is that... Um, uh, it's something that that eventually you'll just you just start seeing more. Uh, I remember I had a, a good friend that um, uh, felt she was a gourmet cook because uh, she got her recipes out of the newspaper, and I told her I thought the time they made it to the newspaper they were um, not to be mean, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> They weren't fit to be yeah, yeah, I don't know, but I didn't necessarily think that that qualified you as a gourmet cook. <laughs> and so just because you do something that wasn't in the photograph doesn't make it arty either. So let's kind of clarify that. But, you know, you can sit there and say, how am I going to express this? What can I do that's a little different? All of those things are important, and you can certainly do all of that, right? Those tools are coming alive. Well, yeah, they they are, aren't they? And and uh, they're starting to 
have some contrast and we're starting to layer some colors. Yeah. And uh, uh, let's see, where's my, okay, so this one would be a little bit of shadow here and maybe this is a little darker here and we're gonna suggest something here. We're gonna suggest, uh, where'd that little sponge go? I want something a little darker here to suggest a shadow. So since this sponge has been in water, I'm going to have to dry it. And how and would you define painterly? Well, at least talking, you know, that's a new new term, I think, that I want to be more painterly. Well, I know my mother always used to say that. It's an Did old she? term. Yeah, that's my mother I always say. That's very painterly. My adopted mother was an artist. And, um, uh, yeah, she was an artist. And, um, so what what is the definition of painterly? Well, she just um, you know something that looked like you know didn't look like a cartoon, didn't look like a like and, a like a photograph, didn't look like a train, you know. So it's basically impressionism. Yeah, maybe. Mm. You know, I'm gonna get this a little darker. I'm I thought painterly meant you could see the brush strokes. No. To me, painterly is a painting that doesn't look like a picture. No. So, good thought. Okay, so we want something a little bit lighter up in here next to our base. There you go. See how the base is coming out because we made that a little lighter right in there. And could you go back with some gold? You bet. You could. Well, we're not, but you could. Um, There we go. So, all right. So then we're going to say that there's our, our uh, table. We've got, let's give it a little deeper shadow here, right up in this way, right in here like that. We'll just deepen the shadow right here. Okay. And bring it around this way and then we'll lighten it right here. Like that. I even give you sound effects. I mean, who does that for you? Sound effects. I tell you, sound you got to have sound effects. So make it come alive. So yeah, so we're kind of getting that going here now. Let's see. Um, so someone said, said, "Well, how did you come up with this uh, pattern or this design?" I pre-designed this painting before you ever saw it. And I, I pre-designed it so I know how I was going to do it. Basically, she plays with her computer. And uh, I want a little bit of this light blue color with a little green in it, kind of like an almost a. Wow. Painterly equals artistic. I want a little bit of this color in here, but not much. I want it a little bit greener than that. Oh, that's a nice color. And uh, just a little bit of this color in here. And I'll go back when it dries. I'll go back over it with the gold or the yellow. I just want a little bit of that in there like that. And now that will that will all go back. So let me take a second and dry this, and I'll be you right back. You want to show? The, I want to dry this. You don't want to show. I will show something later. I want to dry this. <laughs> let me let me just say that, okay? Yes, my queen. All right, I'm gonna dry it. All right, we muted her. She's gone, guys. The queen is gone. Let's go on. What can I use if I don't have gold gesso or gold paint? Yellow. Go with the cad yellow. It's a nice bright yellow. A bright yellow would be perfect for this. I did two canvases for the queen, one in gold and one in yellow. And we talked about it, we wanted to do the gold. Again, this is a 12 by 12 painting. The references will be available on the acrylic painting with gingercliff.com website for our orange and above members. And that should be up there later tonight or at least by tomorrow. And the queen is back. All right. So we've dried that. I wanted to say that you, because you're going to go, why on earth did she put the blue? It looks a little weird. Well, it does. But it won't. But it won't. Does that make sense? It, what, it <laughs> no. does, but it won't. Yeah. But then we have to go back over that with another color. But you can't keep piling on paint. You have to, at some point. Um, you got to dry it. You got to dry it. You should have sound now. 
I lost sound. Anyone else? Well, we were on mute for one thing, but well, you were on mute, but sometimes I get muted because the the um air the you see how you see how I'm kind of it's we've got the color there, but we don't. Just see what I mean? You see, it's it's in there. You barely see it, but it's there. It's not slapping you in the face. No, no, it's not. And um. So I want it there, but not a lot. Just, just if somebody looks at that, they're gonna say, "Oh, isn't there a little bit of um something in there?" Something in there. They're gonna say that. Well, they may say it. I think they'll say it. No, no, they will say it. Okay. There's no doubt they'll say it. So again, I want this a little lot bit lighter up this way. I don't want a little bit of this yellow color. I may have to put out some more paint. I think I need to put out some more of the yellow uh, paint here. Uh, sponge like palette knife uses a little bit of paint. Uh, you're going to use a little this. bit Can more you than you, you would spot? normally, I would say. Do I? You'll use more than you would normally. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, you sponge it towards a lot. But uh, let's see what we yeah, got. You here. could uh, paint this any any size you want. I'd keep it square, though, just because it has design. You can go to 20 by 20, 24, 24, and take it down to how small they make them, 8 by 8, 3 by 4 by 4. I think I've seen those. Just keep it square. Okay, so I don't like that color. That's got a little bright on me right there. I'll put some of this color on here and tone that back, and then maybe some of this color on there. See? Some of that. There you go. There, okay, liking that. All right, so again, I mean, it's kind of how you're feeling about it, but I kind of like that, and I kind of like some of this up this way. There we go. Maybe a little bit more on my vase, like that, right there. There you go. So you see how it's sort of, we're just sort of bringing that out. I think that's probably all we'll do with this. And then I'll just keep working on the daffodils a little bit more, and, uh, uh, just try to define them a little bit. See what I mean? I'm just going to, um, not all of them, but not every petal. We're not going to outline, but we are going to define a little bit, a few of these like that, so that you kind of kind of see where we're going. Because it's kind of almost, not really abstract. I think actually this background would be pretty, John. Um, hey, Wanda Spratt is in the, in, the, in, the, in the room. Who? Wanda. Oh, I'm I late. I had to cook dinner. Oh, you didn't hear that you won anything, did did, did you? Wanda, you won second pickings. On the on the uh, drawing for the on the drawing for the um. And you also won the artist of the month for February. I mean, you just racking up today, girlfriend. I'm telling you, it's there. So we'll have to bring those out so you can select. Yeah. So you see how I'm starting to put the yellow back over some of the darker color. And because it's, it's, it's not going to be as bright, we can still. So then we get the feeling of the orange uh, uh, colors. Uh, there we go. So these, there we go. Just we want to kind of define the different, different. Uh, are these daffodils or tulips? So I keep Those calling them daffodils. But they're tulips. Well, you're painting them like tulips. Yeah, well, they are. And I've got a reference that says they're tulips. I don't know why. Perhaps because I was talking about the Daffodil Fair. But, but we have them titled as Daffodils, so we're probably going to have to change the title. <laughs> Do we really? Yeah. Because that's what you <laughs> kept saying they sad. were. Sad. Well. Carolyn would like to know, how long have you both been painting? Ginger since a wee child. Yeah, I've been 18? a professional artist for years. You know, people always say, do you ever give art lessons? Do you ever give art lessons? People always said that. I said, when I can teach everybody at once. That's when I'll do it. That's when I'll do it, when I can teach everybody at once. Then you're going to see some art lessons. For those of you that are looking for the monthly challenge this time, 
If you go to our website and look under the blogs, we have blogging section now, and select the gab at the top of the blogs and go to our first edition of the blog of the gab. Next one's coming out shortly. And scroll down to the bottom and you will see the link there. But take a look at our gab. It's got great information in it. If you're not on our newsletter, you might want to sign up for that as well, which can be done on the home page. Okay, so I'm going to put a few of the green ones. We'll see. I guess I got to paint some of these down here too. A few of these. Uh, get some shadows under some of these here like that. We're just going to keep this all all very kind of neutral. And this just suggests there might be a, a little bit of a shadow under this one. and maybe up Which here is like this. Ginger's favorite way of painting? Flat or on an easel? Um, we have to film flat. No, no, no. If we weren't filming, would you rather be doing it on an easel or flat? Uh, flat on when it's small, and if it's big on the um, if it's big for sure on the um, on an easel. On an easel. See, so we're starting to put in some. Let's see. Everybody wonders about this stuff. It's just, you know, how you do the um. Uh, uh, how many layers you do is what really what kind of makes a difference. People always say, I understand how that works, but just it does. You just, you know, it's, it's how many layers you're doing. Um, it's all about layering. Does Ginger you, ever stand up to paint? Uh, I, I'll tell you what, uh, back when I was doing painting parties uh, years ago, I had to stand up and paint all the time. It's annoying. I always, I know at, at home, I always have, I, I was like Goldilocks in the, as far as in the three bears, as far as trying to find the, um, uh, the, the absolutely perfect, um, uh, perfect, um, chair. I mean, I've bought hundreds of dollars worth of chairs over the last 40 years painting. Oh, easily. Easily to find out the ones I like, and um, uh, and you know, an art store chairs. Here's a here's a tip. Art art. Here's a tip. You can take this to the bank. Art art store chairs that they sell in art stores for artists are a lot more money than office chairs that they sell for office workers. Maybe even though they're basically the same chair. Mm, yeah, pretty much. Um, though the one I'm sitting in now, I quite like. Um, uh, really do like it quite a bit. So you see how I'm just sort of layering stuff this on, right? And um, we're going to add a few little highlights. Well, how many birthday here. cards did you get? We have not been to our, we just got back on Sunday, and we don't have time on Monday to go out to our our office to go get the our post office box thingy. We'll be doing that tomorrow, so we'll probably discuss those. A next week's exciting live show. Yeah, and I and I got this really awesome makeup kit from Cinnamon. I was going to show you today. It all came from um, Japan. Japan, and the the thing is, is I couldn't. She said, "I'll I'll tell you what it was, so that you can um, tell everybody where to get it." And I didn't see that text come through, so I didn't want to show it to you because I can't really do that since mm -hmm. I don't know where she got it. Didn't get it on Amazon, so. Could it, she could have, it could have come from anywhere, yes. And do you plan on having any retreats in the Houston area? No. No. Ginger, have you ever thought about opening your own art school? What do you think? We I'll... have one. It's called the Acrylic. <laughs> we have one. I absolutely have one. It's the International Painting School. Uh, we teach Painting everybody around Cup. the world. We, we teach people all over the world to paint through personal art coaching. There has never been a niftier way to do that. I'm telling you what, you will learn so much with personal art coaching, better Honestly, than if you, you got you it from me in learn, person. You, you will learn more that way than in-person lessons. Yeah, because what I can do is I can take your painting into my computer and I can film it, and I'll show you how I would change it, and you see exactly what you have to do. You know what I mean? Whereas if you were in person... You would have to hold her hands and tie it behind her back so she wouldn't paint on your painting. Yeah, you know, where I can. How about having a retreat in Australia? Uh, well, I'd love to. 
Yeah, it just uh, well, it was our plan. We had a cruise plan for the don't let's not go there. This is BC. Yeah, we all know what that means. Yeah, and then um, we're going to be this fall. We're going to be in Greece and in Italy this fall for a trip that was planned years ago, and we didn't get to pull off, and we're still trying to honor. You know, hopefully we can pull it off this we year. We can hope it that so you know so we'll be in Rome three times. And we're hoping to see um, a couple Lorraine. people, Lorraine there. And um, all right, so see how I'm just adding a little more contrast to these. Now I'm going to come back here with the. Uh, um, oh, let me let that dry for a second, like because uh, red and red muddies green. I want this to be green. Let me show you the 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 this this quarter's paintings. Well, wait, wait. Before we do that, we have one in the house. Can we give her the the second pickings? Well, don't say it like that. <laughs> Why would you say it like that? Because Wanda, she's the and, second Andrew, person. Andrew's first choice was the diptych. Right. But Wanda painted. Well, I want you to know Wanda painted this herself. She has this painting in her house, a gorgeous big one. Yeah. And she's had it for art coaching a bunch of times. So Wanda owns this. Anyway, so that, that wasn't the one she was hoping to get. So Wanda, you have your choice of the lighthouse. Oh, one of my faves. The um. Oh, another one the, of my faves. The, uh, it's Italy, uh, Venice, or the um. Uh, ocean, uh, which is um. Southern California. Oh, That's the Lone Ocean. Pine. Lone Pine, Southern California. Great yeah. pine. Great pines. So, Wanda, if you're still viewing, which one of these three would you like? As being the winner of the Karen Little Scholarship Fund drawing. Yeah. Uh, we had a question in regards to an easel. Like I said, we'll find uh, it again. Well, what kind of easel would you buy? No, I paint. Let's see. No, wait. Well, Steffi answered something. Oh, I don't know what to. Oh, I find it hard to paint on an easel. Is that something that should should make it better? Or is it just really for large paintings? Um, so that's a good question. Can I can I show what we're going to be giving away now, before for the quarter? Because that's where I started. Then we'll talk about the easel. All right. Sure. So now, all right. So for so those this is of the you quarter who from Karen Little, March, April, May. For March, April, May. For those of you who are through the um are, we'll tell them how they how they could possibly enter to over win that this. quarter for every every hundred dollar donation, you will have a ticket in the fishbowl. Yeah. So this is, if you're not sure how that works, watch, rewind and watch what we did for this one. <laughs> so we have the tulips. I love that one. I love this. And, you know, and yeah. it's, incidentally, that is a, if you, um, if you wanted to do some more tulips, that is a, um, it's in our suggested list. It's a suggested list for you too. And I, I, th I still think there's enough kind of rainy weather going on. This was a very another. I love YouTube. that one too. You know, the Joe's coffee, coffee cup. cup with the raindrop. Yeah. Love this one. You have that choice of that one. Some of you, very few of you, I think, saw this one, which was the bananas and the watermelon. We um, did that, sh sh you know, testing out the Cad Red for Liquitex, and we did a special thing for them. Yeah. And uh, the A will be removed. We That's just chalk. Okay? Yeah. And then we have, um, for those of you who like something a little bit more abstract, this is what I would call a more arty. Somebody asked about, see, that that has the feeling of being arty, doesn't it? Okay. So some of the, Is that up out of your head or is that some? Is no, that, that was an old dead guy. Was that uh, Paul? Uh, no. Mm, but like but it, again, it's on YouTube. It was an old, it was an old DG. I don't know who it was. You know who probably knows is Judy. Uh, Judy must know that. Uh, and then, one that wants the Oval Ocean. Excellent okay. choice. All right. And so this who, is this is another one, but I want to show you something. Before we do this, I'm gonna I'm gonna change this one. Next week I'm gonna show you uh before we'll have John photograph this. I'm gonna show you how this painting, which we, we have done on YouTube, I'm gonna show you how to really bring this out. I'm gonna add texture and stuff and show you how I'm going to really just pop this picture more so than before. All right. So, you know, watch for that next week. I'm going to be showing you that next week. Not part of the, just as an add-on part of the lesson. All right, so here we go. I think everything's been dried enough. We're going to add some more green and get some contrast going here on these tulips. 
Um, again, it's just the Salvador paints and they're greens. Remade, ready to go greens. Yeah, some of you have trouble with greens, and these are, you know, like kind of ready made here. And um, so they're not kind of ready made; they really are. Okay, so use, we're going to use some dark ones. Now the brush had water on it, so therefore it's getting a little translucent on me. So I'm wringing the brush out again because I want this to be darker. If you want coverage, then you have to have paint, not watered down paint. Okay, okay. And I want to have just something going like this. And uh, so we're starting again, starting to put the uh, sometimes a two tone uh, color here. And even though that wasn't um, in the photo, that little leaf, I'm going to add it. This is what we mean about being arty. Okay. And we know we've got another one coming up this way. So it came in here like that. Okay. And I got everything kind of tipping over here, I mean, which is fine. I, I do want a little bit of something green down here. Kind of give that a little place where that they've fallen. But I want to have something... Coming up here like that. And again, I'm lightening up some of the colors like this. And uh, I I like this this leaf, but I wish it I think it needs to come out more here like that. I'm gonna just play with the design a little bit. And because uh, again, if you notice on our photograph, we had Uh, everything's kind of leaning this way. So this has to balance out by being a little fatter. Okay, so we want you a little bit fatter going this way. Okay, so we want to kind of balance that out. Again, put it, just give it another little layer of something. And um, let's see, we're going to say that this is a... Uh, the old dead guy for the artsy flowers is Julius Pincus, P-I-N-C-A-S. I don't think there's anything else of his. No. There's a one up. And I still feel like everything's tipped. See what I mean? Everything's tipped. So I need to have something that's not tipped. Even though in the photograph, everything's tipped. So I need another little leaf coming here somewhere. Let me see, let's try some green. We got everything tipped here, that's just fine. Let's get the white off the brush. And we'll do a little bit more here, like that. Let's just let's get that up there. I want something kind of maybe this, just maybe one lone. Oh, one, one straggler, one yeah, wild guy. One, one, one kind of wild. Going against the green. Yeah, you know. Out on the kind of the, um, Because, again, I mean, I like this, but I, I'm just not a fan of everything being tipped this way. I'm going to just do that. Bring this one up here because I just think it looks better. Okay. So I've got a little bit there, and then I want this to be. Look how dark that is. See, that's no. That doesn't work at all, does it? So I want that leaf to be brighter. Okay, let's just come Can up here. Can you tell us about your chair and where you got it? Amazon. I, yeah, I got it on Amazon, and I do like it. It, um, I like to be able to put, the, I like the chairs that have a rung at the bottom where you can put your feet. And I like the fact that, here's the trick, here's the trick. What you don't want to do when you're painting an easel is you never want to have your brush above your ear. So your chair either has to go up and down or the easel has to go up and down. Okay. And um, something has to move. Something has to, something has to move. Does that make sense? Something has to move. And uh, that's what you want. You want something moving. There we go. So we're just sort of solidifying that. 
now we've got this this thing going wherever there's a light there's a dark right so if there's bright yellow here i mean how are we going to differentiate between some of our um tulips and we've got some white um this outline stuff on here which i'm not sure about but anyway we'll do the best we can here to maybe differentiate some a little bit more than we've got it okay so we're going to come in here like that maybe lighten that up like hey, that i'd like to thank uh Renette for the donation that came in. Thank you to the tech bear for clearing up my technical brain, brain fog again a few days ago. Oh yeah, John, John, I'm telling you what, John, and you do not have to be an Academy member to get help from the tech bear in the sense that if you have a question for the tech bear, write him. Because what John wants to, what John does is he answers questions. He answers questions. And if it's, he may even make a video because chances are, if you have a question, um, you know, using your computer and trying to paint, and maybe you're on a tablet. What you got to tell us is what what you're using, how old it is, what the brand, what you're trying to do. For instance, tell them about the web browser and uh, Macintosh computers. Well, we had a good person saying we were having some strange things happen, and I'm not sure what she's using. But I looked it up, and we can get a little bit of history. And it looked like she's using um, a Mac, a Mac, an iPad, and a phone. So more than likely, it's all Apple equipment. So more than likely, it's Safari as her browser. And Safari is an excellent browser for most things. But for some reason, our site on some devices, it doesn't like. It works fine on mine, but it doesn't always work on somebody else's. We recommend Chrome, Google Chrome, or Firefox. When is the next auction? Soon. That's all I can tell you. I have to pick them out and lay it out, and we've got to redo the site. So, just soon. So, all right. So, you see how I'm going back and lightening up with some of these lighter colors in the kit. I'm lightening up a few of the tips of, you know, some of the tulips, just kind of lightening them up in a few places. And uh, I've had that. So it's it's either going to be something darker or lighter. That's just that's that's all your options, you guys. So if you want something to show up, like I say, it's got to either be a darker or lighter than uh, what it's looking at. So for it's, instance, like all in here, it's the yin and yang. Ne ne next to this tulip, all basically all this was very dark next to this tulip right here. See, this came around like this and it actually cut in there like that. So that tulip shows up. And then the the what happened was that the, the vines or the, the leaves are hugging they're actually hugging the the tulips. They're kind of they they're hugging, they're wavy, and they're hugging. So that one's kind of coming over. So that this is kind of the the you know the trick of bringing some of this out is um, and I like that one like that. I think that one had to go there just to just to be part of the uh, the tulip parade. How's that? We needed a tulip parade, and there it was. So, um, any any other thing we might do? For instance, um, I think we we had some white on this, but I think I'd rather have a bit of yellow on the highlight on the vase rather than white. You know, for me, I'd rather have that. Bring this handle out a little bit more, like that. Let's see. Let's bring the handle out a little bit more. There we go, and just lighten this rim. We could play with this for a little bit, but again, when you look at the, if you look at our, uh, photo, now we've got, I think, a very pretty, pretty arty, pretty nifty arty painting, and um, just just come around this tulip here like that, and kind of get rid of some of these white chalk marks. Let's see what I'm going to put in here that's going to, let's see, what do we want to, I love the, the Salvador kit because they've got all these beautiful bright yellows. So if you want, you know, you can come back in here. A couple of these, maybe we want to be a little bit more prominent. So maybe we'll, you know, do another layer of yellow here like that. Now they're starting to show up. Nothing ever shows up the first, the first couple of times you paint it. Does that make sense? Let's just see how they're starting to pop a little bit more now. 
than they were before. And then you got to remember that your acrylics dry darker. So, um, again, you see, you can see where I'm popping these flowers up a bit. Um, when your paintings are dry, do they have the texture like an oil? Well, acrylics will have a texture like an oil. Sure. Absolutely. Unless absolutely. you water it down. Yeah, so absolutely. Ginger paints with her acrylics in an oil style. Yeah, that's true. Um, they kind of lighten it up under here a little bit here under the table. Because I still want the contrast. Does that make sense? So I'm kind of uh, taking this like that. And maybe I want something a little lighter under here. So uh, there you go, like that. And uh, let's just put, put something a little bit lighter around this uh, pot to... Um, now it's now we've given it somewhere to be, and that's what I'm talking about. We've given it somewhere to be. The same thing here, with a little bit of a shadow under those. Okay, now they've got somewhere to be, and uh, uh, there we go. So we started to see we're starting to see our tulips uh show up how's that they're showing up that's what we wanted just and again you can come back with a brush and tap in a bit if you want to with our stuff but i would say overall that's how we're painting this and again um you want something i we keep talking about that but you want something that's a slightly bit more arty than just your regular um photograph of some tulips and uh, uh paintings and I just, you know and and you know let's get the, these are not so bulgy here this is actually pretty straight on the side see that so let's just carve that down carve that one down you know look at the shapes think about that think about your shapes a little bit where you're going to be if you need a little more contrast somewhere um could I suggest another little tulip right here maybe I could have Maybe right there, just maybe one that kind of broke and put one there. Could not, I won't do that tonight, but I could do it and it wouldn't look bad. If I did this again, maybe I would do it next time. Maybe you'll do it. I don't know. Maybe you'll do it, but maybe I'll put one right there. If I did it, how would I do it? I'd have to paint it white first, dry it, and then put the tulip in. You put up maybe just a little one right coming up here just to kind of balance it out a little bit more. Everything was so fallen over. You saw that, right? Everything was so falling over there we go here's a question for you i varnished some paintings today for the first time and had some streaks i tried to correct by painting by waiting a day and adding more varnish but you can still see through and see streaking we don't know what kind of varnish you used so you know the varnish and the brush you were using yeah the brush and the varnish uh the ultimate varnish brush which um you can buy they're about twenty dollars are well worth the money right and they're made by the brush company yeah the best a silver brush company but they are probably the best varnish brush we've ever used and um uh really really like it like those a lot and uh we would recommend highly recommend those and also that uh, if you've ever watched our videos on youtube on how to varnish you always follow the brush strokes. You never go up and down and back and forth. You want some streaks. That's a surefire way to get them. And you can't fix that. You have a beautiful painting and you've just majorly um, changed the whole look by varnishing up and down and back and forth. And it really, just it's just, uh, and that's what and that's what they tell you to do on the varnish instructions. So it's not your fault. They told you to do that, right? I just used a regular brush. Yeah. Uh huh. And what what kind of varnish? What was your, what, yeah? What was your varnish? What what varnish did you use? Well, she's coming to a closing moment. I'm almost done here. Almost done. Uh, we'd like to thank everybody for joining. If you had not had a chance to subscribe, take a moment and do that. We'd love to see a hundred thousand before the end of the year. And it's, and how is some people going to? Uh, how can they? Um, Participate oh, we don't have a, a word. Oh, wait, um, wait, wait. There's more. 
how are they going to get this? How can they have an opportunity to do the uh, Salvador to win to uh, be in the drawing for the Salvador paint for next week? Was this kit? Well, Salvador rose and said, "Where are you guys?" Well, we were traveling, so we couldn't get, give any more away. So Salvador, you were a little upset with the paint. So um, here's the thing: What are your favorite flowers? Tulips or daffodils? <laughs> and and the hashtag word is tulips and salvador paint those are your two hashtag words tulips and salvador kit salvador kit yeah s-a-l-v-a-d-o-r kit is it all one word or two words yeah, one word all one word okay so and just like we'll do one of those random drawing sites we it'll be fun this last month we all did um we did all the old dead guys and uh did, we had fun with that I just felt like we might like to have some fun doing something more arty. This month, I want to play with arty things, something that you normally don't see us do. And um, I look forward to seeing your artwork um, yourself and um, see what you guys paint. Um, I can't, I, actually, I really think that would be so fun. I'm going to go back into this Daniel Smith stuff with my, um, let's see with what it does gold. here. My okay, gold. John's gold here. My gold. And, um, I just, I feel like a little bit of gold on that pot would be kind of fun. I think? knew it. What do you guys think? Just a little bit of gold on that pot. The varnish brush is from the Sober Brush Company. It's called the Ultimate Varnish Brush. Yeah, boy, isn't that nice? They're about 20 bucks. Gold, I love that. A little bit of gold. Don't need, don't, don't want to take away. Who but... was the third winner for the donation? That was Tint, and she selected the Lighthouse. Okay. All right. Andrew, so there, again, this is the Salvador, or rather, this is the um, Dan Salvador paints is what I used tonight on this, and the only exception was the titanium white, and I did get some golden cat cadmium yellow medium, and then this is the Daniel Smith the uh, gold uh, gesso for the background. But if you didn't have that, you could use gold or any other. You could use like yellow or any other gold paint. Really wouldn't matter. Um, have fun with this. Take the sponge. Play with this. What could you paint? I don't know. I'm going to sign this right here, maybe. Right there. Well, it, it feels like it needs something over here. I'm going to sign I it right here. It. It's never done. Well, we have to sign it. Now, any other questions before we hang up? And I, and uh, Hang up? What are we, on a phone? Yeah, we're on a phone. Any we're, other questions? We're on a phone. Uh, and, uh, and also, I kind of want, I want to know what you'd like to see for this uh, month, too. And of course, the other tip I'm going to give you is when you're signing on a canvas, make at least a little fingers or width away from the edge in case there's a frame. You wouldn't want your signature covered up. And we'll do the you could put red it right flash across through the, that uh, when it dries. I hope you all had fun with this. I did. And um, this was fun. I had fun. And anyway, thanks, everybody, for, uh, for the donations. Appreciate it very much. Uh, please take a moment and look at our... Uh, uh, acrylic painting with ginger cook on uh, dot com. Take a look at our website. We've got some great examples of personal art coaching if you want to know how that works. Uh, if you want the um, traceable for this, which was uh, on our website, John made it available in black and white for, for orange members and above. And take, you know, read our latest newsletter. Make sure you sign up for that. We call it the YouTube Gazette. Make sure that you you get that because we give you all, all the links to the paintings that go with this. It's it's packed every week. We're really on a, on a new roll this year. So thanks, you guys. Anything else you want to say, boss? No. Really? I don't That's think just, so. just not like you. Okay. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us, and see you on the next... Um, Monday night, 5.30. Yeah. Central. And what's Monday night going to be? It'll be the 14th, maybe. Could be. See you then. Bye. Ginger Cook, the queen of color, with a blazing brush at the speed of light, and a blank canvas, and a hearty yes and yes, the queen of color, Ginger Cook, and her sidekick, John Little, teach you to paint with acrylics.